So I've had a lot of people over the years telling me, hey Kev, you know, you should do a whole video on the preferences section. That sounds pretty boring, but you know what? Let's go for it. Hey everyone, Kevin Oxen here with visualproductivity.net and we're gonna talk about the preferences section from Xmind 7. And just for information, if you wanna follow along with what I'm doing, I do have this cheat sheet available for you. This sheet I'm working on right now, it's available over at visualproductivity.net. All I ask is that you sign up for my newsletter and give that a chance. All right guys, let's get into this. It's 17 things, let's open this thing. I'm gonna show you what we've got. 17 big bad boy things, but we're gonna go in one by one and we'll talk about each of the different types of preferences. Are you ready? Because I'm not sure if I am. All right, let's get into this. And we'll go to edit and preferences. All right, we're gonna go up to general. The first one along the way is restore last session on startup. They used to have a, plot, a spot where you could choose a whole map that's no longer available, it looks like. So now, as opposed to that, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna recommend yes, select restore last session. What that means is, whenever you close XMind, the next time you open it up, whatever you we were working on will still be available. Check updates and news. Uh, you know what, I get their information, I'm always up on top of things. Maybe just subscribe to my newsletter and you'll, you'll keep up to date. If you want it, go for it. Otherwise, I'd probably recommend getting the XMind newsletter instead. I recently opened a list of files. I rarely use this, so I leave that at the default of four. Automatically save, exactly what it sounds like. I highly, highly recommend uh, leaving it at least five minutes, five, ten minutes. It doesn't even slow you down at all. I would have it on and just in case something catastrophic happens. The last one is the auto backup to the black box. And that's just more, if something weird happens and your file gets corrupted, there's a chance you might be able to go back in and recover something. I always leave that on. I also almost save every, hopefully at least every month, I have a backup version where I save. So this is a thing where hopefully you'll never need it, but if you do, it's turned on at the right time. So go ahead and I would say automatically have that on. The keys are just keyboard shortcuts. If you want, here's a spot where you can create your own. So it shows you what there is, and you can also create your own. If I was, if you want to go in and see what types of shortcuts are available, I would do it a different way. And I'll just actually, I'm gonna get out of this, and we'll go to, where's my general, there we go. If you want to view the keyboard shortcuts, I would use keyboard assist. So either help, key assist, or I would do control shift L, and let's just do it quick it pops up a list of all the short uh, shortcuts you can use. And when you're done, you just click off it and you're out of there. All right, and the network settings, let's go back into the network settings really quick. There we go, network settings. These are just network connections. This settings for if you are using the local area uh, sharing. If you're not using it, don't worry about this, just leave it as it is and it'll be fine. The author info is really just like a Microsoft document or something along those lines where they, you can put your name in and if someone were to go in, and if they were eager enough to go in and try and find your information, it would be there. So I'm gonna have it entered for most of my things and that way it's just there in case someone needs to get hold of me. Uh, bigger plate, you can link up bigger plate and if you're not sure what bigger plate is, it's a great big resource where you can download templates and files uh, from I think six or seven different mind mapping solutions, including XMind. If you're not sure what it is, head over to biggerplate.com, check it out. If you want to link your account so you can automatically save to Biggerplate, here's the spot to do it. Drag and drop. You have three choices when you're dragging and dropping anything. And I'll just go into my little thing to show you what I've got written down for that. And drag and drop, there's three options. One is to link it. So you're linking it as a hyperlink, whether it's on the web somewhere, but also you can link something on your computer. What's good about that, you can see, is it keeps the file size to a minimum. What's bad is that if you ever move that file that you have on your computer somewhere, if you move it to a different folder, all of a sudden that link stops working and you've lost it in XMind. If you copy it, which can be cool sometimes, it makes a copy right into XMind, that's great if you ever try and share your thing or whatever else it is. The bad thing though is if you ever go back and change the original file, if, you, if it's a Word document, you open that Word document, you modify it, those changes won't copy over to XMind because obviously you just copied, you took a copy and moved it into XMind. What I do each time is I just let it ask me. I don't really link much into, I don't drag and drop much in because I don't like having extra bloat in my file. So 
For me, it really depends on why I'm putting it in as to whether I would have a copy or whether I'd have a link. If, most, if something's on the web, I would just link to it. All right, editing, let's go back to our file. Editing. As far as the preview picture, I never really see the preview picture when I do it anyway. I just skip it because I want to have my file size as small as possible. The undo operations, I don't know. I, I don't know if you would ever do 100 continuous undos, but I never have. I've never needed more than, I don't know, maybe five, maybe 10 just for fooling around. Um, but I would keep it at 100, leave it at the fault of 100. The positioning, what the overlapping does is it kind of what it says here, overlapping and free positioning. So it lets things just not, the lines kind of cross over and not touch. So that I'm allowing it. I rarely ever use it, but it's, I've got it enabled in case I ever want to use it. And next one is the animation. Animation just means when you open something, it's going to show. It's going to show it expanding and contracting just to make it look a little nicer. And the same with shadow, it just makes the, the everything look a little bit nicer. Let's go, I'll just enable both of these really quick. If I go in and just open this now, you can see, ooh, you can see it slowly expands where how I normally have it, it's just like, boop, it just pops and it's automatically open. Um, and it's your choice how you want to, to do things, but I'm gonna keep things as uh, off, just I find it's a little bit faster, man, to, yeah, up to you. The default zoom actually come, is at 120 when you first get the program. I just find that a little bit too big, so I've put mine back down to 100. Evernote, if you know what Evernote is, you probably know how to use this. You, you can link it, and there's a way through XMind to save your files to Evernote. I've got a tutorial on that, so we'll leave that for another time. Languages, all right, now I've got mine set to English, but there are several languages you can choose to work with XMind in. This is the defaults, the, the settings, uh, all the, the different things like that. That would change to a different language. Uh, if you choose to, there you go. You can choose to do it right here. Local network sharing. I've usually left this enabled, but I don't really share with anyone else on my local network, so today I just went in and disabled it. But it just lets you enable, disable, and if you want to change your name when you're sharing information, this would be the spot to update it. Whether you want to have your first name, last name, and nickname, it's, it's up to you how you want to use that. This also is, is what will show up in your comments is, is this as well. All right, MapShot. A MapShot is something that's it's a pro feature, but I want to talk about it here quick. I like it. It's just a screenshot is what it is. They call it MapShot screenshot. When you do a MapShot, it will always save to the clipboard so you can copy and paste something. This selecting this option will also let you save to a local folder. So if I'm going to email to someone or if I'm going to use this for a blog post, I'll, I have it saved to my local folder, my desktop. That way, every time I do it, boom, it automatically saves there. I can take it, I can change the file name if I want, put it into an email and send it off to someone really quickly. So I have mine enabled and I've flip-flopped back and forth whether I thought that was a good idea or not. The markers section lets you add markers, and they're kind of like clip art things that you can add to make your, your map look better. I'll go in and I'll just show you a marker really quick. If I'm here, I can right click, and I can go down to markers, and then there are several that are free marker options. I can go in, I can change the priority levels, and have several other ones as well. So I can add my own, you can add your own different version of this. So this would be the marker group, the people, the arrows, the symbols, and then the individual markers would be the ones you would add in here. Now going into priority mapping, the priority mapping is more just if you are going to export your XMind map to Microsoft Project, this is a way that you can compare them, the levels, the priority levels in XMind to the numbers system in Project. Just so you know, exporting to Project is a pro feature. So it's not available in the free version, but if you want, you can go ahead and play around with this. And if the time comes that you want have both Microsoft Project and XMind Pro, you're all set up for this. With search engines, this defines the default search engine when you're using the browser that's embedded inside XMind. This isn't going to change your search engine that you use on a daily basis. This is linked up with XMind. So that's all that's for. I, I don't really use it very often, but it's there if you want to. Spelling, I've got spell check enabled, but I also like ticking off some of these two where it could be all caps, you know, words that just they look really good in a mind map, but they're not really proper grammar. 
So this helps me write and be creative and not worry about saying, oh, what happened? What's wrong? What's spelled wrong? This just gets more things out of there. Task info. Task info is where you're gonna add an, an assignee. That just means it's a person's name. If I want, I can go in and I can, I can add my own name. I can add someone else's name. And that way, if I have several people on my team who are working with me, I'm able to add. If all of a sudden Kevin needs to do this project or that has to do this task, I can assign people to a task. If you don't have people, if you're the only person who's doing all the work, then don't worry about this. If you have a group, this is a way where you can assign certain people to do certain things and then you can go in through a Gantt chart or something else and you can track what the results are or how long it's taking. The themes, what this talks about, and I just, I just have it set to ask what to do every single time, but where this comes in is if you were to go into a map, if I was to go in, say, to a map like this, and I can go to preferences, or sorry, properties, and I can change the, the, the font. If it's bolded or change the, the font type, or I can change the, the look of how the, how the lines look. If I were to change those things, that's what this is talking about. So if I go in, a theme's already set up, but then I go and make some just some slight modifications. This goes and says to me, do you want to override these? So if I change to a new theme, do I want to override all the stuff I just did, the manual things that I did? Or do I want to keep anything that I went in and just personally, manually uh, customized? For the most part, you're likely not going to be going in and playing with themes that often. Usually once it's set up, you do your work and you play around you know, a little bit, but it's up to you what you want to do. But I just recommend leaving it as, as having it ask you every time you do something. And look at this, two more to go. We're almost there, guys. Uh, the web browser. What this allows you to do is if there are links in Xmind, and I've got obviously tons of links in this, uh, in this document, it lets you choose whether you want to use an internal web browser, so let's open it right in Xmind, or use your Google Chrome or, or Microsoft Edge or whatever you have for your, your regular browser. I have it set to open in Chrome, which is my default browser. And finally, Xmind Pro, it just shows you if you actually own Xmind Pro, who it's licensed to, and you can follow through with that, not a big deal. Now guys, I know it's a ton to go through, and I'm just gonna close this too. That's why I've got all this. Let's go ahead and we will, oops, let's expand everything here. I've got tons of information on all this. I've got it all in depth. I also have a blog post over at visualproductivity.net that will detail all this, all the different screens. Guys, if that was useful, I hope it was, even though I was cruising along at a mile a minute, uh, please go ahead and give me a like, I'd appreciate that. Leave a comment down below if there's something that's not clear, or head over to Visual Productivity. Again, I'll throw a link down, low where the, uh, down below where there will be a link to a blog post on this, showing everything with screen captures and all those good things. And uh, that's it for now, guys. Thanks again for watching. My name is Kevin Oxner with visualproductivity.net. We will talk soon.